after my money and passport got stolen in Sudan, I stayed nearly five months in Khartoum before I was able to continue the journey. But because the land border to Ethiopia was closed, I had to take a flight to Addis Ababa. There, I met up again with Simon and Caro. I'm in Addis Ababa and after five weeks in Khartoum I thought I was done with the administration but uh, the first thing to be done here in Addis Ababa is to get uh, permission to travel on land uh, to Kenya because the, officially the border is closed for uh, tourism the Dutch embassy should be somewhere over here and look at these mountains such a different landscape from Khartoum, from the desert. Cool. I'm so excited to get into those mountains. I now have my paper from the embassy. Now I need to get it stamped and signed by the immigration office. And then we should be ready, or at least I should be ready, to go to Kenya. Uh, Simon and Caro need the same, but from the German embassy. Uh, hopefully they can succeed as well. It's almost evening. I have visited five places, at least two offices in each place. But I got my letter signed and I have now an official permission to enter Kenya. Uh, at least I think, because I cannot read a single letter on the paper. Yes, I have been looking forward so much to this moment. <laughs> Finally on the bike again. That has been, I think, one and a half months uh, since I got robbed in Khartoum. And now in Addis Ababa, we are leaving to cycle through Ethiopia. We were all excited to cycle through Ethiopia and to experience what this country has to offer. But already our first night camping in Ethiopia turned out into a nightmare. What a first night in a tent in Ethiopia. Uh, yesterday evening, after a rather relaxed day of cycling, uh, we tried to look for a camping spot. Um, but there were a lot of people and a lot of thorns on the ground. So I got a flat tire. I told to Simon and Caro, uh, please go and look for a camping spot. Um, then when I finally fixed my tires, uh, actually two punctures, I tried to call Simon and Caro, but the connection was very bad. And then it was getting dark. Uh, I decided to just pitch my tent somewhere because I could not see where I was going and I had another flat tire. And then I got a phone call from Simon and Caro uh, that they were attacked by a group of children, the phones being robbed, and that they were heading uh, back to a village where we came from to go to a hotel. Then I was, well, <laughs> quite uncomfortable in my tent, but it was calm. Then this morning at like five in the morning, there were already people around my tent, still needed to fix my tire. And it's these Ethiopian people, they just open your bag and take, take what they want. Uh, so they stole my earphones and they stole my drone controller. And after giving some money, I got my drone controller back, but without the charger. And then finally they gave also the money back, but not my charger. Oh, 
what an experience. Now I'm heading uh, back to this village where Simon and Caro are staying in the hotel. And I think we will have to reflect on this experience of cycling, camping in Ethiopia. I'm back with Simon and Caro. What a crazy night they had. Uh, they got really beaten up with rocks. Whole bodies on the bruises and scratches. I think the flat tire was the best thing that could happen to me yesterday. Otherwise I would be in the same situation. Uh, but after that crazy night uh, for them, crazy morning for me, we decided to go to this place. Uh, it's like a paid camping spot uh, next to Zivai Lake, uh, which is there. I think I'm going there now, take a swim and enjoy the first peace and calmness in Ethiopia. There's a rhythm and rush these days Where the lights don't move and the colors don't fade Leaves you empty with nothing but dreams in a world gone shallow, in a world gone mean Sometimes there's things a man cannot know The gears won't turn and the leaves won't go There's no place to run and no gasoline It just won't turn and the train won't leave Stay with you tonight Hold you close to the morning light In the morning watch the new day rise we'll Do whatever just to stay alive we'll Do whatever just to stay so wild camping in Ethiopia, at least in this part, uh, turns out to be pretty impossible if you don't want to get hurt or robbed. Uh, so now we are trying to find these kind of uh, lodges, resorts where we can camp, uh, where it's more secure. And it's also very quiet, very beautiful. We even saw some monkeys in the trees. Nice place to take a swim, although the water looks a bit brown. I'm now cycling out of the town of Shashamane, uh, heading towards the mountains. Uh, Simon and Caro uh, decided to take a different route uh, towards the border with Kenya. Um, so now I'm on my own. I just, I just got a nice rose. Uh, I have, I have no money, <laughs> sorry. Okay. So I just got a rose from somebody who was getting married, handing out on the street. Very nice and something different from the you, 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 money, money, money. Uh, hopefully the weather 
it's not good getting too bad today what a strange feeling to a cycle through the forest in the rain after the desert in Sudan and all this dusty and busy roads in uh, through Ethiopia I've just gone maybe 10 kilometers uphill and it's uh, totally different here you heard my I came out of the woods by choice. Hello, you. Shelter also gave the shade. In the dark, <laughs> okay. that was good. No Just leave that click in my head. And I will remember the words. I'm about to enter the last village before I go into those mountains. I'm now at 2500 meters, I go up to 3700 meters uh, and then go down towards like the entrance of the Bala Mountains National Park. I got a friend accompanying me in the first part of the climb. This is what I came to Ethiopia for. Believe it or not, but there's really people living here. Above the clouds, about 3,400 meters. Almost the top of this pass, maybe 300 meters left. Uh, if I can find a quiet spot, I will try to camp on the mountain. There's absolutely no wind here. Cause I'm a hopeless 
3,600 meters, almost the highest point of the pass. Uh, yeah, it's, it's eight, uh, it's already past six, so it will be dark soon. But there are just people living everywhere, even there was a place where there were some people with machine guns. Um, so I would think I will ask there if I can camp there and hopefully that will be safe. So that worked out quite well. Uh, I could ask, I asked the guys if I could sleep here and they offered me this place here uh, to put my tent. Uh, I'm sleeping here at 3600 meters so it's quite cold. Uh, yeah, so thank you for these guys. They offered me a warm blanket. Very good. <laughs> and yeah, really surreal landscape to be camping here. Where are you go? Come down, come down, sweet reverence Until my simple house and So I had a very safe, quiet night with the people down there Really into the mountains, into the clouds here and It's quite cold actually Heading towards the mountains and towards the rain, it seems. So I've now entered the Nepal National Park area and I'm about 2600 meters now, uh, going up to 4300 meters on this road here. Muddy, muddy gravel road. Um, I'm afraid the next 600 kilometers to the border with Kenya it will be this kind of road and perhaps this kind of weather as well uh, yeah I'm still laughing about it now maybe after one or two days <laughs> my face will look different but we'll see Come to me, clear and cold, some sea. Oh, this road too heavy, too steep. I have to walk the bike up. Hope it gets better soon. At least the weather is getting much, much nicer. I've been crazy, couldn't you tell? Threw stones at the stars, but the whole sky fell. Now I'm covered up in straw, belly up on a table. Well, I drank and sang and passed in the stable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm camping on the slopes of Bale Mountains National Park here Really spectacular view from the tent 3,700 meters. I camped behind that bush there, which is about to be swallowed by the clouds. Uh, but I'm going this direction, and the weather is looking very good. Um, I really feel it on my breath, the altitude, uh, but if I feel a little bit okay, I want to go to the highest point here uh, which is the second highest point in Ethiopia 
That tall grass grows high and brown Well, I dragged you straight in the muddy ground And you sent me back to where I roam Well, I cursed and I cried, but now I know Oh, now I know Just a sliver back then And I ached for my heart like something mad When it came on it beat and it boiled and it rang Oh, it's ringing This is the Bale Mountains High Plateau, 4,100 meters. <coughs> Very cold and windy. This is why they call Ethiopia the roof of Africa. And right there, that mountain, uh, it, maybe you can see the road. Um, I might take that, it's probably a very steep, tough road, but that goes to the <coughs> second highest point in Ethiopia. <coughs> and I'm having trouble with the thin air. I'm gonna cheat a little bit now, leave some bags here and then go up to Mudintu, the highest point in the Bala Mountains National Park. Uh, I hope I will be at the top before the rain starts but I'm not sure. Ethiopia's second highest point, 4,377 meters. Whew. I'm quite proud of myself. <laughs> oh, that was a tough, tough climb. The weather is not getting any better and with this thunderstorm the road is getting worse and worse. Uh, I think I'll maybe go half an hour more downhill then try to find camps trying to find a camp spot. Uh, there's quite a lot of thunder and lightning. Oh there was a one and cycling downhill on the muddy road. 
through the rainforest in a thunderstorm. Well, what do you expect in a rainforest? A lot of rain. Everything is wet already. Uh, I just scared away some animals when I walked into the forest here. I'm a bit hesitant to pack everything really soaked. Not even five minutes on the road already flat. So many rocks, sharp rocks. Ta-da! Blue skies, sun. The road looks a bit better uh, because it's not so wet here. I'm now out of the rainforest, just past the first village uh, where I ate something and I found a hose to clean my bike. As always, some tourists around. <laughs> I can't remember being so tired. I can barely barely walk, let alone push the bike up this 
very steep, shitty road. I had some stomach problems. I think I shit like five times already today. And I'm out of water, I'm sweating. It's just maybe three, four kilometers <coughs> on this road uphill to the next village where I can buy food and water. But man, that seems so far. All right. I can't say anything. So tired. We're all falling and we need a place to hide. Safe place somewhere in the woods we can start the fire All we know is what will be our home We will stay until the break of dawn Just had some lunch here, now trying to get out of the <laughs> People that have gathered around me. Bye bye. Too crazy. Cold night takes us to a place to escape the chill. Tucked up somewhere in the woods on a Wake up feeling the cold in between our toes Is there a way that nobody knows And we leave it all behind So it just rained a bit Now the road Can looks like a river And we all sit around the fire We feel a little warm now And we all sit around the fire We feel so much better now Again, some more river crossings and the road is, I don't know what, how long this is going, going to take. I have about 200 kilometers left. Yeah, so I'm here at the kind of a military station. Uh, they tell me I cannot go further because there are some uh, people who kill people, bad people, uh, who also blew up a bridge uh, on a, so I cannot cross a big river. So this is as far as I can go. I was already thinking, like, I just saw two buses like going in the opposite direction of me further no traffic at all 
but yeah, now the situation is clear, but it's a little bit frustrating that nobody told me before that I cannot go on this road. Yeah, there's just no way they will let me go. And also there was like a, like a group of 50 military men just coming out of the bush uh, from a search to this like terrorist group. Yeah, it's <laughs> a big ruin of my plans. I was hoping to be in Kenya in two days, but yeah, on the other hand, <laughs> you don't want to take any risk with your life. Well, I found a truck going back, at least, uh, at least halfway to Negele. Uh, <laughs> I hope, uh, I hope we will survive. Surprise, surprise, the truck uh, just dropped me off uh, in the dark here, like halfway in this village. And then uh, I ended up sleeping with some people here. Uh, so now it's about 35 kilometers to Negele. Uh, it's like 6, maybe 7 in the morning. So I will be there in a few hours and then hopefully I can catch a bus at least to the next place. Man, 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 what an adventure. Few things go as planned in Ethiopia. <laughs> Back in the Gale now, and I'm really dying for a nice fresh fruit juice. Ooh, I kind of needed this. Mm. Oh, that's so good. With just a few days left on my Ethiopian visa, I take several minibuses from Negele to Yabelo. From there, it is again 200 kilometers to the Kenyan border. Ethiopia is known among cyclists as being one of the tougher countries to cycle through. And I have experienced why firsthand. But it is one of the most rewarding countries at the same time. I swam in its nicest lakes and cycled up its highest mountains. I saw its rainforests and its unique wildlife. But above all, I met its most caring and loving people. Cycling through Ethiopia has been an adventure I will not soon forget. <laughs>